Good day fellow scapers, my name's Deck, but please call me Hobo and welcome back to my channel. So, as many of you may already know, I am well on my way to getting a Master Max cape and I wanted to find out what would be the best way to train room crafting as not only is it one of my least favourite skills, it's also a skill that's had a little bit of a revamp. Just how good is this revamp since the release of Necromancy? We've had some new runes introduced and even since then, new items which not only help us reach runecrafting altars easier, but also provide us with a little bit more experience. So I decided I would put together a runecrafting guide on how I would personally train runecrafting from level 1 right through to level 120 and beyond. Before we even get to the runes, let's talk about some extremely useful things that I would recommend you get, even at level 1, because they will make a massive difference. Of course, I'll be linking all of these items in the description, just in case you don't know how or where to get them. First things first, let's talk about the most basic item you'll be wanting outside of Essence. I'm of course talking about the items that when used cumulatively will increase your carry capacity up to 48. These would of course be the runecrafting pouches. Pouches small through to massive are earned through a variety of different ways and require different levels in order to be able to utilise them successfully. When you have them in your inventory, I would highly advise right clicking them and select the configure option, which will then allow you to choose which essence you would like to pre-fill your pouches with. Once you've done this, fill from your bank and save this as part of any of your presets as you'll never have to refill them manually again. Another item that you're going to want to use to boost your carrying capacity is an Abyssal Summon. These summons act as the only summons capable of acting as a beast of burden for essence. At its peak, an Abyssal Summon, namely the Abyssal Titan, can carry an additional 20 rune essence, which is better than having the largest pouch available to you in the game. I would suggest also using rune crafting urns because they will grant you an increase of a flat 20% experience per hour. Last but not least, I would also highly recommend that you get yourself the Ring of Imbuing. Wearing this ring will give you a flat 10% additional experience to all runes produced at every altar. Of course, this is an absolute no-brainer. Now that's just a couple of different things I would advise having probably right off the bat to make things super simple, but I'll talk to you about a variety of different other things to have later on in this video. So let's talk about what your first couple of levels is going to look like. As much as in this game you can craft bone runes immediately straight off the bat, I would instead focus on something that will future-proof you right up until around level 40. This is because for the first couple of levels you're going to be wanting to craft basic magic runes before transferring over to necromancy runes. So to do this, I would actually advise that you complete two quests. The first quest is the Enter the Abyss mini quest, which will grant you a number of things. Firstly, a little bit of experience, but that's actually not all. It also grants you access to the Abyss, which acts as a quick shortcut in order to get to the altars themselves. On top of this, it will provide you with a small rune pouch, which will allow you to hold three extra essence at the cost of one inventory space. After you've completed this, I would recommend then completing the Rune Mysteries quest as not only will it give you access to the Wicked Hood, which stores up to 100 Rune or Pure Essence, but you'll also get some more Rune Crafting experience. Once you have this, you are pretty much ready to enter into the Abyss, but first let me talk to you about a couple of things that you should be aware of. So. Wildy used to be a very scary place, particularly for me, um, I've never been interested in PvP, and nowadays you can actually opt out of PvP. That being said, as you'll want to be using a demonic skull whilst you're running into the abyss, which increases your experience gain by 350%, it also leaves you open as a target for PvPers. Now, PvP is almost completely dead, but I like to say never say never, right? So these are a couple of things that you'll want to be doing. Equip any dual wield melee weapons, I would recommend something super cheap and perkable with the wise perk. When navigating from the Edgeville bank, you'll want to be ensuring that you're ready for pretty much anything, so I would recommend that you have access to the following abilities. The dive ability, the barge ability, surge or double surge. You see, when you're running through the wilderness, if you see somebody hanging around the wizard ready to PK you, simply click on them and use the barge ability. Not only will it stun them for a couple of seconds, giving you a couple of moments to dive to the wizard to teleport to the abyss, but on top of that, it shortens down your run time. Of course, if nobody is around, feel free to use barge on one of the skeletons to also cut down run time. 
Now, getting back to Edgefield could be really, really simple. All you need to do is have a Wilderness Sword of the first variant, and that will grant you free teleports back to Edgefield. Now you're pretty much good to go. This is the kind of inventory that you're going to want for your setup that you'll be wanting to use. And now from levels nine plus, you'll be wanting to craft earth runes. When you enter into the abyss, you'll be sent to a random part of the outer circle. You'll need to find your correct place to teleport to. I've put a map on screen so it will tell you where you need to enter. Feel free to screenshot this to become somewhat familiar with it. As I mentioned, from level 9, you're going to be wanting to train on Earth Runes. Do this until level 14. Now, the experience rates for this with the Demonic Skull will be around 41,000 per hour. Once you hit level 14, you'll want to swap over to Fire Runes, where your experience rates will increase to approximately 44,000 experience per hour. Do this until level 20, where you'll then want to train Body Runes, which increases your experience rates to 47,000 per hour, and then up to 55,000 per hour when you hit level 25. Keep training your Body Runes up until level 27, and at level 27, you'll switch focus to Cosmic Runes, which will grant you up to 58,800 experience per hour. From here, you'll want to stay the course until level 35, where you'll be mixing it up a little bit and swapping over to Chaos Runes. Now, if you're using optimal pouches, such as small and medium, Chaos Runes will grant you up to 62,000 experience per hour. That being said, getting the medium pouch can be a little bit RNG focused, so I would actually advise that you continue without the medium pouch, as once you hit level 50, you can enter the Rune Crafting Guild and speak to Wizard Korvac and buy the pouch instead of relying on RNG for it. Either way, craft Chaos Runes up until level 40, and then we move over onto the new runes in the city of Um. Now, to obtain the essence for crafting these runes, you'll need to use a new type of essence called Impure. Link in the description for more information. The key thing that you'll need to do to be able to effectively craft these runes is complete the Rune Mythos quest, which will enable you to convert standard essence into impure essence and also create the new four runes. We're going to start off by crafting flesh runes, which will at first will grant you up to 67,000 experience per hour. Now, once you hit level 50, you can get back to the Rune Crafting Guild to increase your carrying capacity by an extra 13 essence by purchasing a medium and a large pouch. Now, armed with the additional essence that you're able to carry, you can actually now make up to 140,000 experience per hour. Now again, there are some super things worthwhile mentioning. Now we've converted across necromancy runes, you'll be wanting to use the bracelet of passing. Again, I'll put a link in the description. Long story short, it will teleport you almost directly to the necromancy altars. You can also ditch the demonic skull and get yourself a tome of um, which increases your rune output by approximately 5%. These pouches that you've been carrying around, yep, they're still excellent to have, but remember to configure them again to accept impure essence instead of rune or pure essence. Also, now we've hit level 50, I would highly advise you get the Protect Pouch Relic, as any pouch after small will degrade gradually until you need to repair them. The Relic will prevent this degradation, so no repairs necessary. I'll also say that massive pouches, which is at the far end of the pouch scale, aren't actually repairable, so bear that in mind. This is probably what your new preset is going to look like. For now, you cannot left-click the Bracelet of Passing, so you'll have to right-click it and select Haunting on the Hill to short telly to the altars surge south to the teleport and once you've crafted the, at the flesh altar once you don't have to navigate to face it again for the right way as your character will automatically do it for you i'll say that this does change based on your last room craft now once in you can then either choose to surge or dive to the altar i would at this point also recommend using the power burst of sorcery it's a single use per sip and has a two minute cooldown, but will double your rune creation each time it's used. Either way, train flesh runes, which from level 50 onwards, with these buffs I've mentioned, it will grant you an experience rate of 140,000 experience per hour. Continue right up until level 60, where you'll be transferring over to Miasma runes all the way up to 200 million. At level 60, your base experience will be approximately 290,000 experience per hour with the buffs that I previously mentioned. At level 75, you're going to want to nip back to the Rune Crafting Guild and purchase the giant pouch from Wizard Korvac, which will give you an additional carrying capacity of 11 essence. This will send you up to around 355,000 experience per hour. Now, once you hit level 90, if you haven't already, you're going to want to nip to Rune Span. Find yourself 61,000 tokens. Now, this can really be done at any time, particularly if you wanted to skip the runs directly into the wilderness. Once you have 61,000 tokens, buy yourself a Master Runecraft outfit, which will increase your experience by 5%. 
also consider purchasing the massive pouch for 1000 tokens which will further increase your capacity by 17. Now at this point, your base experience for Miasma runes will be approximately 440,000 experience per hour. At this level though, it's highly likely that you're gunning for level 99 or even higher. So I've decided I'll include a few more experience boosting stuff which can be used at any point during your rune crafting journey just to boost your experience rates. I'll start with the one that everybody knows, which is the Clan Citadel buff. This gives you a 6% increase to your experience for whatever you're training. That being said, my clan is open to new members, so feel free to join up. We welcome skillers, killers, and cluers alike. The Premier Artifact is also a fantastic item that you can use. One of the benefits of the Premier Artifact is that for one hour, you will get an experience boost of 10%. The Inspired Genius Relic will also couple nicely with your Protect Pouch Relic as it will grant you an additional 2% increase in experience. The Desert Pantheon Aura is also another phenomenal aura to use which grants you an additional 10% experience. If you want something to complement your Desert Pantheon Aura, feel free to pick up the Wisdom Aura which also grants you an additional 2.5% experience which is great for when your Desert Pantheon Aura is on cooldown. Now with all of these boosts running, I would expect that you would see experience rates of up to 600,000 XP per hour. If you wanted to do this during double experience and also wanted to throw in some bonus experience for this, you could see rates of up to 1.8 million per hour. I will say as a disclaimer for this, I use each of these workings out based on a sample run of 10 minutes worth of rune crafting for each of the necromancy rooms. So there will be room for some variety. People have told me that they've received more experience than I've mentioned and some people have also told me that they've had slightly less experience than I've mentioned. That being said, the Miasma runes completely smashed the experience rates of soul runes, which were the old method, and only granted you rates of up to 288,000 experience per hour. Editing Hobo here, asking you to consider to yourself, have you learned something of value here today? If you have, and the answer is yes, and you like my style of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Now, if you like the video and want to see more in the future, let YouTube know you like my stuff by liking my stuff. Other than that, this is the end of the guide, so I'm sure you can appreciate it took a long time to make, so I do apologize if I missed anything. Please feel free to mention if I did miss something down in the comments, just so others can learn from you as well. Either way though, that is the end of this video, so I suppose I just wanted to say to you, Happy scaping.